hey, 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 so you have a private practice. Maybe this is your coaching business or this is your therapy private practice. And you have been charging the same rate forever. So my friend, today we're going to talk about how to increase your rates in your private practice or your coaching business so that you can actually increase your revenue. Because look, this is the truth. You started your business not just to help people, because of course you're a helper. Otherwise you wouldn't even be watching this. Okay. So let's just, let's move that off the table. Let's just go with, of course you want to help people. I want to help people too. I'm a social worker for God's sake. Um, the bottom line is why do you want your own business? Probably you want your own business because you want to have some financial freedom. You want to have emotional freedom, meaning you don't want to be stressed out because Joe Bob is telling you when you can work, when you can take a vacation. No, you can't call in because your kid is sick. You want to have that stress relieved. So you want more money, you want more emotional freedom, and you want that time factor. Your job, what you've been wanting to do, your job is to be a business owner. That's your job. (laughs) Be a business owner so that you can, what I teach my clients, design your lifestyle and build a business to support it. So for example, if you wanna take off the month of August because you have kids and you wanna travel, maybe you wanna take off the month of December because you love you know, baking cookies and taking them to all the nursing homes in your area, I don't know. Maybe you wanna write that book. Maybe you wanna be off on Fridays. Maybe, okay. So here's, here I'm gonna teach you today how you can increase your rate with your current with your private clients currently. So if that's of interest to you, you know, give me a thumbs up. So I know if to take it to the next level and we'll talk about more money making strategies, make sure you give thumbs up and subscribe, hit the bell and subscribe. So you can learn how to make more money within your, your business. So this is what I hear all the time with people when I'm like, let's increase your rate. Let's increase your money. Number one is they don't know their numbers. Look, hello, my friend. You need to know your numbers. That's what will define you as a successful, true business owner that can scale her business, grow her business, create multiple revenue streams, and just Sally Sally Joe, who's like dabbling in, I have a private practice. When now I know that you're also a helper. So in your mind, I hear this. This is what I'm going to tell you what I hear from my clients. I really don't know numbers. I don't really like numbers. Oh my God, numbers. I'm not good at math. I'm going to ask you a simple question and I need you to answer this. Ready? Pay attention. If you're spacing out right now, what's one plus one? I know you said two. That's numbers. That's money. If you can add, you can figure out your money situation. Now saying that, There's going to be a lot of like money mindset stuff. That's for another day. In other words, you probably have a mental ceiling on how much money you're allowing yourself to make. My job is to help you break that mental ceiling. By the way, I'm Mary McNeil. If you haven't followed me, if you have never met me, I'm a former psychotherapist who decided I was just burnout. I was fried and I was tired of being capped at my income level. I wanted more money. I wanted more freedom. And so I had worked in every industry that you can imagine as a social worker clinical, you know, I'm, I had my own private practice. I worked at Johns Hopkins, et cetera. Now I transitioned into coaching and I am your regret proof life coach, helping women get unstuck, like stop procrastinating, like show up and go for it. Want more, claim it unapologetically. No guilt, sister, no guilt. I'm also a business consultant for mental health and wellness professionals who want to either add coaching to their current business, build up their private practice, or 100% transition. So today, I want to talk to you, though, about how to, what I like to do with my clients who have a private practice, and before they're transitioning, one of the very first things I do is make sure that you're, if you're wanting to keep your private practice, keep it generating. Keep, like, let's get this to be a machine, a money-making machine. So typically that comes with increasing your rates. So I've had clients increase their rates 44%, 82%, 157%. Can you imagine going from like $75 an hour and now you charge $200 an hour? How different? I want you to imagine how different your lifestyle would be. 
how different would the client who's coming to you, how much more invested would they be in their own mental health? Right? So I know you're like, oh my God, I can never change that. Oh my God. I already know. Look, the other day I was working with this one woman and she has a DSW from Penn State, I think. She's gone to Duke. She has all these initials behind her name. She's been practicing in therapy for 26 years. And I said, how much money are you making? Because I just go right there. She said, I know I'm not making as much money. Are you ready? Hold on to your hat. She was charging $125 an hour, an hour, and she lives outside a major metropolitan city. So some of you are like, well, you know, she lived in Timbuktu, $125 an hour. No, still, that's not enough money. What's the point here? The point here is she didn't want to evaluate her numbers. This is what she said. And I have notes here because I didn't, I wanted to speak clearly on what she said. She said, um, she, I would feel so guilty charging more. I would feel so bad. That other client I told you about that we increased her rates from like 70 to 100 to now 200. She said she didn't want to do that at first because she thought it would be a hardship. Now hear me really good here. It would be a hardship for her clients. So I'm not saying take advantage of poor people or people with lower socioeconomic. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about she was not charging the value of the transformation that she was giving to her clients. Her, the, the exchange was off. Her client base, no problem investing more money in their mental health. No, they have no problem. And whether it's like jumping up $100 extra an hour or more, but, or even $10 an hour and inking it up, you know, she wasn't exchanging. So I asked her, how do you know? How do you know? So that's not what I want to ask you too. How do you know if it's going to be a hardship for your ideal clients? How do you know? You don't know. Now, some of you I know are like, well, I, I do know because I only work with this population. People will invest and pay for what they find of value. Hear me. There are people who don't have a lot of money who have a Cadillac sitting in front of their trailer. There are people with a lot of money who are house poor because they've been, they value a house. And there are people spending $100,000 a year on a coach because they value the exchange that they're going to get. I've paid my own life coach $5,000 for a 90 day program, transformed my life. I've invested of course in therapists. She could have told me any number, I would have been fine with it because I wanted what she had to offer. It's the same with your ideal client in your private practice or even in your coaching and in your coaching. That when you're attracting your ideal client, they are willing to invest because they want the solution you can help them with. One of my clients, she works with in her private practice, women who have sustained trauma. She is an expert at this. She has, she, she has massive transformations and support with these people, these women. And what has happened is, you know, people are willing to work with her because they know what they're getting. So this is what you do the very first. So you've got your population, current population, okay? And let's just start you off with all of the current population of people. You let them know. Say today was June 1st by, you know, hey, you know, Sally Sue, I wanted to let you know that, that my rates are increasing and you've been with me. So the rate for you will increase on whatever, June, July, August, like give them 90 days, whatever, two months, August 1st. And you've been paying $100. It's going to go up to $150 an hour. Just to let you know, all new clients coming in will be at $200 an hour. Like tell the truth. Like, be honest. I think well, this is the thing we think. We're like, oh, we can't talk money with people. Be honest. Tell them the truth. You are grandfathered in, or you don't have to use the word grandfathered in. You are, because we've been together for a while, I'm increasing your rate. It will be $150 an hour on August 1st, just to let you know. All new clients coming in will be at a $200 an hour. 
so that you've planted also that seed for when the time comes that you increase it again, which may not be for six months or a year. I don't care. It doesn't matter. You get to decide that you have established that. Then any new clients that come in are at your $200 an hour rate. So that's one piece of this puzzle. That, and what to do for people who are like, no, I don't want to spend $150 an hour with you. Well, you get to decide. You get to decide, do you want to refer them out? Do you want to, um, instead of seeing them weekly, say, uh, okay, well, why don't we go for twice a week? It's still going to be 150, but we'll go, excuse me, twice a month. Maybe you have a group practice and you can say, I'm happy to refer you to one of the people that I've trained or that's within my practice so I can still oversee your case and how you're doing. Okay. Um, so I know that some of you are like, mm -hmm. Look, I want you to really understand that you have been institutionalized, we have been institutionalized on how much therapy should cost, how much you should charge. And because we have also been, you know, told since we were little, here's your minimum wage job, or here's, this is how much I'm going to pay you. So you are an employee, you have this employee mindset, this institutionalized mindset, and you have not gotten into a real business mindset, an entrepreneurial mindset uh, of, of thinking of you are selling an exchange of value. So one of the things to start with, so you also understand like, what do I charge? If I'm going to increase, maybe you're $125 an hour, well, what should I increase it to? So let's reverse engineer. How much money do you want to make? How much money do you want to make? Let's just for easy round numbers. Let's say you want to make $200,000 a year. Okay. So that's roughly $16,000 a month in, in income. Okay. So you get to decide based on $16,000 a month. That's $4,000 a week. If you had 20 clients at $200 an hour, that's $4,000 a week. There you go. 20 clients. You could probably take Fridays off. So do you see how you, once you know what the number, the income level that you want to make, then you can back that up and decide what your fees are going to be. This is what you should not do. And then, and I'll leave you with this. And also for those of you who are like, oh my God, I don't want to sell. I don't know how to do this. I want to give you my enroll clients. It's called the art of the ask closing the deal, how to enroll more clients. And it's my script for how to have a real conversation with someone to see whether they're a fit for you. And whether this is private practice or coaching or whatever, this is about you saying to them, Hey, this is what I have to offer. See, part of the issue here is, is when you're learning to convey the value of your services, it, it's learning that nuance of how to say that. And then it's learning how to say the number. And then to take it one step further, when you're looking at your revenue, the other thing to look at is like, how long are you seeing a client? So have you been able to gauge, like maybe you see clients for a year, maybe you see them for just six months, maybe you see them for 90 days. So that way you know, like how many clients you need to enroll into your practice to make sure that you're hitting that $200,000 a year or 150. So if you have 20 clients a week, but oh my God, they only stick with you for a month. Well, like your marketing strategy needs to be a little bit different. The other thing too, is to learn how to say to people, look, based on the thing, whatever the thing is, right? Whatever the mental health issue is, whatever the coaching thing is, it's like you have a methodology that you want to help them with. And so you know that typically I work with people for, that could be, I typically work with people for 90 days, people who come in with this particular. So, so you want to, you know, like get healthy and lose 25 pounds. So as a wellness coach, I typically work with people for six months. The package for that is this. So I understand that, you know, you've, you've sustained all this trauma. Typically I work with my clients who have had the same level of trauma for anywhere from nine months to one year. How are you think? What are your thoughts about that? See, that way you are letting people know as the expert 
that you have a plan for them, that you have a container for them. And it's not just this off, this one off. Number one is you're not being as helpful if you just have these one off random sessions. And number two, your client then has an understanding of what to expect. When they have an opportunity to understand what to expect in your relationship, this dynamic, then guess what? Then they can relax a little and do the work. But if you're like, oh, well, we'll see each other for a while. I mean, they're like, oh, I don't know. When is the day going to show up where she's like, we're done? So number one how to increase your rate with your current population of people. Number two was how to, you know, what to say to new people coming in. Number three is how to have that exchange of value conversation and maybe the time frame so you know what to expect. Your client knows, knows what to expect and you as a business owner can project your revenue and how many, how, what your marketing strategy will be so that it's, it's less stressful for for everyone involved. So if you want some more support around that and you want to really understand like what it would be like to have a conversation to enroll people into your business without feeling like you're twisting arms, there's a link below, closing the deal, the art of the ask, and you'll get my complete script. Just take it, do something with it, like go for it. And if you want some more information, make sure you've subscribed, you've hit the bell because I'm teaching you how to have that big, bold business that you've always wanted so you can experience, my friend, the regret-proof life. Because why not? Why not? Everything that you want. Why not you? Bye.